start your day with this simple question. What is the greatest ideal of myself that I can be today? Okay, well, most people, number one, they get up in the morning and uh, the first thing they do is they think about the problems in their life. And those problems are memories from the past. Mm -hmm. So the moment they think about the problems, they're thinking in the past, right? Every one of those problems has an emotion attached to them. So they start feeling unhappy or unworthy or whatever. And how you think and how you feel is your state of being. So most people's entire state of being is in the past when they start the day. So if they're in the familiar past, they're gonna live in a predictable future, right? Mm. So they get up and they check their cell phone, they check their text, their WhatsApp, their Facebook, they post something on Facebook, they tweet, they Twitter, they check the news, then they go to the bathroom, get a cup of coffee, take a shower, get dressed, check more emails, drive to work the same way, do the same thing. So they're in a program. They've actually lost their free will to the program. Because the moment you start reacting emotionally, emotions are a record of the past. And if those emotions are driving your thoughts, you're thinking in the past. And if you can't think greater than how you feel and you believe your thoughts have something to do with your destiny, you're creating more of your past. So it turns out that the repetition of thinking and feeling and feeling and thinking, these loops that people get caught in, condition their body to subconsciously become the mind of that emotion. Which means now, their body as their unconscious mind is believing they're living in the same past experience 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. What's the relevance behind that? Well, the latest research on genes says genes don't create disease. It's the environment that signals the gene that creates disease. The emotional environment? Any environmental reaction. But if you're reacting emotionally to your environment the same way, you're signaling the same gene in the same way and now you're right. headed for a genetic destiny. So. Huh. The hormones of stress push the genetic buttons that create disease. If you can turn on the stress response just by thought alone, your thoughts could make you sick. Now, the moment they decided to change, anytime you decide to change and change anything about yourself, get ready because it's going to feel uncomfortable. It's going to hurt. You're, you're going to leave the known. Yeah. You're going to leave the familiar and you're going to step into the unknown. Even if the familiar is uncomfortable and painful. Right. You it's still gonna be painful leaving the pain. Right, because some people are super happy being unhappy. Right. So then they would rather cling to their suffering than take a chance in possibility. So these people said, I really have nothing to lose, right? So then they said, I'm willing to be uncomfortable and be in the unknown. And it turns out that's the perfect place to create from. Hmm. So when the body is conditioned to become the mind, then to change is to be greater than the body. So now that I know that I gotta break the habit of being myself and I can't mismanage my thoughts and feelings, I gotta change how I act, I gotta watch how I speak, I gotta become conscious of how unconscious I am because 95% of who we are by the time we're 35 years old is a set of memorized behaviors, mm -hmm. uh, like a computer program, emotional reactions, unconscious beliefs and perceptions. So the first step to change is to become conscious of how you think to notice how you act, to pay attention to how you feel. And the act of observing those states of mind and body separates you from that program. Now you're, you're, you're the consciousness observing that program. It turns out the more conscious you become of how unconscious you are, you know, lighting a match in a dark place, that first step creates enormous amounts of chaos in the brain and body. And it's disturbing, so people mm. just go back to the same addiction, the same emotion, the same problem. <sighs> this feels better. No, that feels familiar. So they said, okay, mm. now I gotta change. I gotta reinvent myself. So now your brain is no longer a record of the past because typically it is. Now it's a map to the future. So wow. now you're priming your brain. You know, experiments with piano players. You know, you take a group of people that never played the piano before. You divide them into two different categories. You take one group of people. You teach them one-handed scales and chords. You do a brain scan on them. They come and practice for two hours a day for five days. At the end of five days, if you rescan the brain, they grow new circuits on the opposite side of the brain. Nothing magical there. You learn something new. Learning's making new connections. Get some instruction. You get instruction. You get your body involved. You get your body involved. You're going to have an experience. Experience enriches the brain. Pay attention to what you're doing. You've got to pay attention and repeat it, firing and wiring. You're going to assemble new circuits. You can take the other group of people, have them come for two hours a day for five days, do a brain scan before, the brain scan after. Have them close their eyes and mentally rehearse playing those scales and chords. At the end of five days, <laughs> they'll grow the same amount of circuits in their um. brain as the people who actually physically demonstrated the action. What does that mean? 
I mean, it's not only that they changed their brain by thinking differently, but their brain looks like they've been playing the piano for five days. Now, set them in front of a piano. Never played the piano before. They'll play those scales and chords because their brain is wired wow. to play it. So now, the act of rehearsing who they're going to be, what are the qualities, and beginning to get in this creative state, began to lay down the circuits of a new personality. And a new personality is connected to a new personal reality. These people began to reprogram their brain and body. And all of a sudden, they began to act differently. Why? Because they installed the circuits. They began to think differently, of right. course. They began to feel differently. They, they were no longer feeling pain. They're actually liking themselves, right? So then if they're living by a different emotion, and they're, they're feeling an elevated emotion before they're healing, before they were healed. They're not waiting for their healing to feel joy and gratitude. They're feeling right. gratitude and joy. Now their body's believing that it's healed because the body's feeling the emotion ahead of the experience. And if the environment signals the gene and the end product of an experience in the environment is emotion, you're signaling the gene ahead of the environment. And what do genes do? Genes make proteins. So what are proteins responsible? Mm -hmm the structure and function of the body. Now you're literally becoming somebody else. And now you're turning down the genes for disease and you're turning up these other wow. genes. So I started to realize that this reinvention process is exactly what we've always done. It's just that we get complacent in certain areas of our life and we stop. And when you're living stressed out and something goes wrong and you're threatened or you can't predict an outcome or you have the perception that something's getting worse or you can't control it, you switch on that fight or flight nervous system that yeah. we talked about. Yeah. Now here's what happens. When that occurs, you start shifting your attention from one person to one problem, the one thing to another person to another place, because your brain is trying to predict the next moment. Well, every one of those people and things and places has this neurological network in your brain. So as you shift your attention from one to the next, it's like a lightning storm in the clouds. Your brain starts firing very incoherently. And when your brain is incoherent, you're incoherent. And mm. when you're living by the hormones of stress, not a time to create. No. Not a time to open your heart. Not a time to learn. Not a time to trust. <laughs> and it's a time to run, fight, or hide. So people spend 70% of their time of their life living in the state. Wow. So people are always selecting the worst thing in their mind and they begin to emotionally embrace that future oh before gosh. it happens. Thought and emotion, you start conditioning. So you're conditioning the body to become the mind of fear. You keep doing that enough times, once the body becomes the mind, it's a subconscious program. The person has a panic attack. Try as you may to control it with your conscious mind. You can't, you programmed it subconsciously. Now you worry about the next panic attack, and now as you start worrying about the next panic attack, it's the vigilance that creates the next one. Wow. Ask yourself, I do this all the time. Write down four thoughts that you're gonna stay conscious of the whole day. I can't, it's too hard, you'd be surprised the moment you become conscious of what those thoughts are, how unconscious you've been to them all day, right. you know, for weeks on end. Write down what you speak, how you speak, four things you wanna change, how you act. How do you, how do you act? Do you complain, do you blame, do you make excuses, do you feel sorry for yourself? That's a victim consciousness. What emotions do you live by? Is it possible that you're so used to living by guilt, mm. you don't even know it's guilt, it just feels like you? Do, you? do you allow your energy to drop? Become conscious of those states of mind and body and review them and say, this is the old self. Then say, what thoughts do I want to fire and wire in my brain? And start firing and wiring and start feeling it. What behaviors will I demonstrate today? What choices will I make? One day, one lifetime. Mm. And just like you did, rehearse them. Rehearse the whole entire thing. Yeah. Begin to install the neurological hardware in your brain. And if you keep installing it, the hardware is gonna become a software program and you're gonna start thinking and acting that way. And then here's the tough part. Can you teach your body emotionally what your future is gonna feel like before it's made manifest? Hmm. And don't get up until you feel that way. Now, practice that for a few days. And then see if you can stay in that state and watch all of a sudden all those weird doors start opening for you. 